folks, and welcome to Pastor's Conversation. I'm with Pastor Ryan, and I'm Pastor Bobby. Boom. Bobby. Yep. Yep. So. And uh, so we're going over. Uh, we have two more. That's right. After this, the yeah. Sermon of the Mount. Yep. After this, yes. And so, uh, did it go as fast as you thought it was going to go, or did it go slower? Well, well, that's like trying to say, had the, because I pretty much started the week after I got here. Right. Right. So it's like, how how long does like it feel weeks. like I've been uh, the pastor of the church, and like. About six years. <laughs> so, a lot's happened in that, that so, yeah, amount so of the, time, right? The the sermon part has has been pretty quick, and you move through. You know, you can see the progress, but the feeling of time, the experience has been of your different. tenure here yeah, thus far. Yeah, right. good, good. Yeah. <laughs> Bad, good. <laughs> no, but you know, I've, you know, time moves differently for different people. Like you know, like you were just on Bob. Bobby was on vacation, and uh, yeah. up in the woods doing fun stuff, yeah. and. Did it go quick? And then you look, you think like, when it's over with, you're like, oh my gosh, it, it's like, like we fast. just got here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where my perception of time has always been, you know, I know exactly what I was doing. I don't know how long it took. And it's like people say when your kids go off to college, like my youngest just did, and, or yours is getting married. Yep. And, and you think, people say, well, it's going to go by so fast. And I'm just like, nope, nope. Yeah, I remember every day of those 18 years. I remember every day that, like, this has been the plan all along. So, mm -hmm. getting to um, chapter seven, verse seven, has been the plan the whole time. It's taken as long as it needs to take. And, yep. And yet, there's still a zillion things we haven't talked. Have you about. been tempted to go part two, part three on any of these sections? Yeah, there, I mean, the beatitudes are always tough because right. I did two parts on that, and there are times where you feel like every one of these needs its own. Right. But then, what you're doing is you're just breaking. It it's, I'll t uh, this is not a part of our... Uh, but rabbit trails... This is important, right? This is important. Because okay, okay. we break this down and we can spend a week on each little piece of it. Yeah. And imagine what it was like to hear it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like it would just wash over you. And you'd be like, what did, what did he say about... Right. And you think, oh, man... I don't but you, know. Boy, I think you would cherish those letters that he, you know, well. Once that, it's recorded. Once it's recorded. Yeah. And, you know, like Paul's letters. Yeah. They probably just, like, they probably brought that, that to synagogue all the oh, time, yeah. right? And in the homes. And when you would, you see some of the messages from the Sermon on the Mount showing up in some of Paul's writings and, and in Hebrews and even in James. And so you think, well, obviously this theme, this, this conversation happened over and over and over, mm. and it, it just kind of seeped its way into the, the nature and culture of the early Christians. What theme would you give tonight's sermon? A theme? Well, I, I looked at it in terms of I, trying to identify what, what is it that you want, what's your will? Yeah. Because, right. you know, the whole, the whole discussion of, uh, well, we can get into it in a second, but the yeah. whole discussion is, is like, what do you want from God? What do mm -hmm. you want from others? Mm -hmm. Right. And then when you break that down and you start to think, well, what does that mean? And what does it mean that you, when you, what you're going to receive, what you ask for, you're going to find what you're seeking? Because it wouldn't apply equally to everybody because not everybody's asking for the right stuff and not right. everybody's seeking the right thing. Yes, and you didn't fill in the blanks for us, but you yeah. said, okay, but here are the gifts yeah, that he has given yeah, us. Yeah, right. So you front-loaded that and made us think, no, I have a, these things. There's a reason for that, right? Because okay. you can... You could take each of those sections that ask, seek, and knock, and I could have spent. Uh, Boy, I could have, that, right, hey, if right. you're looking for a three-part sermon, there yeah, it is, right, right there. there. I don't have to think about it; it's yeah. ready to go. Right, right. But instead of doing that, I, I was thinking, what? Well, what's the heart of this? The heart of this is is, what is it that you're? You know, how, if I'm supposed to treat you the way I want to be treated, mm. I can't do that until I know how I want to be treated. Mm -hmm. and then I evaluate is. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Is it righteous? Is it holy? Is it is it from God? Even what I want from you is, mm -hmm. are my expectations? Have they been baptized? You know, and you know, when you really start thinking that that way, it's like, okay, I need maybe I'm wrong. Like maybe a lot of things that I, I actually want and and think I need, I don't, or they've already been given to me, and I'm just not aware of it. There you go. And I think that's where we camp tonight. Yeah. And then uh, just to let the folks know that we are in um, Matthew chapter seven. Verses uh, 7 through 12. Right. And I don't think I made that reference earlier. But okay, so the gifts that we have, you uh, stated that we have four. Oh, there's, I mean, obviously. Well, yeah, but I mean, for. We could go on forever. I, right, but that would be part. Three, I wanted to four, hit some, some of the things I think people are genuinely. 
praying about? I was trying to think, what are the things that the average person is asking God for? Yeah, good and, point. Yeah. Okay, so um, one of the gifts mm-hmm. that you said the first one was forgiveness. Forgiveness, Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you think that, okay, the average Christian struggles with this? The, the, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, of, of, the, of the finality, sure. of the beauty, of the totality that His perfect blood... I struggle with it. How do you struggle with it? You know, when you you fail and you do something dumb, performance. Well, you just even just coming back to God, I'm just like, I'm so, uh, like I'm so annoyed and I'm so frustrated with myself, and I'm sure that God, I'm sure you're mad at me, and I'm sure that you are also just as frustrated. And you're like, you just you, we anthropomorph. Oh my goodness, I can't say that word. We uh, project onto God our feelings and right. our right. how I would be handling things. Our paradigm, yeah. our, our economy, our culture. And so I, I struggle with that, and I need to be reminded regularly about the truth of the gospel. I mean, I, I need to preach to myself in those times. So our past sins, mm-hmm. present sins, future sins are forgiven if we are in Christ. It's that final. It's that beautiful. Yep. Okay. Would a let's say that uh, on the way home tonight, mm-hmm. I get miffed. Yep. I get upset. I know I've sinned. Do I need to ask for forgiveness? Well, are you miffed with me? No. Because if it's if it's projected at a person and it's because you're angry towards that person, then you probably should seek that person out and deal with that issue. Okay. So if we're mad with God, right? So the the idea. Okay, like if I, let's say I'm, um, I've got a gambling problem and I, I make a mistake and I get back into it, I, I bet on my favorite team and I don't want to go back down that road. I know it's, it's for me, a sin mm. because it leads to things that are wrong and mm-hmm. bad, but I, I, I made that mistake, right? I did it again. Okay. I knew it was wrong. I did it again. Okay. All right. You live in that cycle of, angry with I'm angry with myself I'm okay. disappointed with myself hmm. it wasn't a mistake it wasn't an accident I did it on purpose yep. it's willful it's purposeful yeah how then do I turn back to God right when I feel like such a, a failure right and that's where we have this constant feeling like well God will you forgive me for this right and and we kind of camp out there for a long time right I had a friend, uh, he came into a book study one time, and he says, you don't need to ask God for forgiveness. And he just kind of like, he's like, nails on a chalkboard at first. Yeah. But his point was, is that, no, those sins are forgiven. Yeah. And it was more about confession. Yeah. Confessing that, no, I I have sinned, but I also accept the fact that that his blood Mm. has covered that sin. Yeah. And I acknowledge that. So I go to confession, and then I end up with praise that His blood has forgiven. Yeah. Give, uh, well, the forgiveness. confession, okay, think about the effectiveness of confession. Yeah. Efe- it only is effective in your heart. Okay. It, it doesn't change the nature of the sin. It doesn't change the way that Jesus forgives you. It doesn't change His actions on the cross. It is only effective for me. Okay. Like, I am changed as I confess that sin. I am humbled. Uh, okay. I learn from that. I'm now accountable to someone else, or I'm accountable to God, whatever that is, but it, it, it doesn't change God. Right. Or His opinion of me. But do you think that most of us wrestle with that? Oh, of that course. That truth right there. Yeah. Because, because I wrestle with it amongst my own thoughts and feelings, and so again, I, I have a hard time imagining the fact that God is just not like me. Like, just a really good version That's of me. That's probably the big yeah. rub. Yeah. The way that we measure ourselves is how we just we measure all things mm-hmm. and uh, judge. Last week's sermon, yep. right? So, okay. Um, do you think a lot of us believe that God is holding those sins against us mm. in some way? We must. If you look at our behaviors, right? Um, you know, if you think about the guilt that people carry and. Uh, I mean, I've had conversations just today with people that were, you know, feeling like, well, I, I haven't come to church in a long time because mm. of this failure. Mm. And it was just like, I couldn't bring myself to come into a place like this where people are talking about God, where kind of where God is in their minds. And you just think, what a waste, you know, what right. a waste. You've, 
the, the thing you needed the most, which would be uh, fellowship and encouragement and instruction from, from God's people, you, you were depriving yourself of that mm. because you wanted to whip yourself and mm -hmm. make yourself feel bad because of your what you've done. Do you think uh, mm -hmm. some of us put ourselves? We think that we have to have a, we have to go into the spiritual timeout corner. Yeah, oh yeah. Put our nose in the corner. That's and, right. And then when we determine, I feel I feel bad, and then I'm starting to feel less bad. Right. And I feel like oh, okay, okay now okay I can go again. back. And so we project that onto God and think, well, that's mu that must be how the Spirit is working in my life. Yeah. It's remorse. You know, it's godly sorrow. Godly right. sorrow is good. Right. You know, it, right. It, turn your laughter to, to weeping. You yep. know, it's good to see the weight of your sin and to be affected by it mm -hmm. and because it will change your heart. Mm -hmm. But just as long as you understand that it's not changing God. And, you know, Isaiah 66 says that God, God esteems the person that is contrite. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that we're aware of our sin. We know yep. that we have sinned. But I think that the beauty, and it, 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 when my kids come to me, mm -hmm. and there's no longer that separation. Yeah. They come and they, they confess. They come and we talk through it. That, that, that's a beautiful thing because mm -hmm. it, um, I, I no longer have this between myself and my, my, mm -hmm. my child. So contrition is a, I mean, obviously something that is to be valued. It's it's taught all through Scripture that, you know, we are to. Um, what, how would you define co contrition? It would be like a brokenness over one sin. Uh, you said yeah. the word remorse. I think that it's good. I think that 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 contrition, as I understand it, with God is that uh, when I come contrite, broken because of my sin before Him. Um, when I do that, there should be that comfort mm. that there is no, Bob, thank you. Yeah. And there's that, that closeness, that, that, um, that reassurance in my soul. And then if I need to make restitution, if I need to go and make amends, uh, if I have mm. to you know, uh, go to another person, I think that's a, that's a good thing. Um, that can happen, but the Lord gives us the strength to do yeah. that. I always think of it in terms of when, when I'm re repentant and con contrite in my heart towards the Lord and I'm, I'm coming to God with that sense of, okay, I know what I did was wrong. I know that this isn't what's best for me. I love you and I want to do what's right. Mm. right? It, that journey is, is good for me. It's what builds strength and character and maturity. But it's, it's important, like for what we talked about tonight, it's important to see that we've already been given all that we're asking for from God in that moment. Mm. We're asking for forgiveness, it's already been given. We're asking mm -hmm. for His presence in our lives because mm -hmm. we feel separated because of our stupidity. Mm -hmm. It's already been given. Right. Uh, you know, you're, you're just, I've just turned away from Him for a while and I'm feeling like an idiot. Yep, and right. I need to, I need to deal with my stupidity. Right. I need Which to be you've, honest you've, about you've it. You've segued beautifully <laughs> into uh, His presence, the gift yep. of His presence. Right. And um, my, that's good, mm. uh, because a lot of us have misconceptions about his presence. Yeah. What do you think some of those those big mm. misconceptions I'll, I'll are? I'll be honest, I was a bit nervous, because okay. there's, there's some people that um, have some very interesting ideas about the presence of God, mm. and how you get into the presence of God, and how you call it upon yourself. And how, I mean, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of weird ideas around this, because... Yep, yep it's not something that you can nail down. Hmm. All right, it's, it's, it's not like you can go, boom, okay, there's the Holy Spirit. I see the Holy Spirit is right there. Right. This is what he's doing. Lock him in a box. But by faith, we have to embrace the scriptures that say that he is with us. Mm -hmm. And then as a believer in Christ, he is also in us. Yeah. Two different things. Yeah. So, you know, which is a mind blower, the omnipresence of God. Mm -hmm. He's present in all places, which is a mind blower, yeah. because he's not a Swiss God cheese, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, Swiss cheese God, <laughs> yeah. where he's in some places but not in others. But that's a mind blower, and you think, well, then that would suggest that he's in the brothel. His presence is in the brothel. Hmm. It goes to, and this is totally off topic, but it goes all the way down to, uh, in the, in in physics, there is um, a st strong force and weak force that holds atoms and Together. electrons and all this stuff in the right order in the right places doing the right things the glue and there is no good explanation no. as to why it does what it does no. 
it just naturally follows these prescribed right. routes. Right. Right. And that's, you know, I look at it all the way, all the way down to the most minute level. Right. God is this substance that holds the universe together. Right. How does, if we grasp mm. this a little bit more that his presence is with us, and he hasn't taken it away from us, but, you know, David mm. says, take not the, you know, yeah. your Holy Spirit from me, which me, would mean uh, from his life yeah. and not have that effect of, and the power, right? Sure. So he was, he was, he was afraid of that. Well, God doesn't have to keep using you in the same way if you're going to live in sin. Right. He's, he's got, he's sovereign. He can choose to how he's going to work in you. And what you said tonight is he would, he is still with you. Yeah. But what he's doing in and through you might be. uh, And are you aware of him? Like, I mean, if you're not paying Mm. attention, if Mm. you're not actively pursuing him, if you're not engaging with the, the scripture that teaches about the truth of the Holy Spirit, mm. not the not the lies and not the the emotions that people usually think with, but to get down to the brass tacks, what is this what is scripture saying about the Holy Spirit? Right. Yeah. And how would that affect yep. our moment by moment actions throughout the day? Yeah. So if you're not paying attention, yeah. You're gonna feel feel yeah. uh, like God isn't with you in these moments. Mm. Why? Because I actually wasn't really, I wasn't, I wasn't focused on him. I wasn't paying paying attention. So mm-hmm. I, I feel separated from him. Right. I mean, if you did that with your wife, if you're you know on a long car ride, mm-hmm. and you got totally distracted, and for six hours of a twelve hour car ride, you didn't talk to her, and you just stared out the window and you thought about your own things, you were on your phone, whatever, and then all of a sudden you start to talk to her again, you might feel some distance. Right. Right. right, you might all of a sudden be like, "Hmm, you're right there with <laughs> each other." I was, but I don't feel like I'm with you. Yeah, I was somewhere else in this journey, and <laughs> I, and I now see that there's consequences to that. So you made a big statement. I loved it. Uh, we don't need more of Jesus. Interesting, big yeah. statement. Yep. We need less of ourselves. Yeah, it's we that need idea. Less of us. More. We don't need more of God's presence in your life. Correct. Right. You can't, yeah. You can't pour more than all. Right. Right? You just, it's not possible. Mm. But what are the things, again, what are the things that stop you from, from our perspective experiencing God's presence? Mm-hmm. And it's all, it's all, I mean, C.S. Lewis said, like, you know, when he was talking about people, Christians often feel God differently depending on their digestion for the day. Right? I mean, if, if you, uh, you ate some bad cheese in the morning and you're having a rough day, you know, if, if you're in a place where you're you know, like, oh, my knee is really hurting, it's hard to, sometimes we're so distracted from, we, we feel like God's not present in this moment. Mm. And, mm. You know, we're, we're capricious, fickle people. Yep. And it's just that realization that God is not. Yep. And so the reality is that if there's distance between you and the Lord, it's not the Lord's fault, it's yours. So what do you do about that? Right, and so would you say? Uh, beca- do you think that some of us uh, believe that? Well, the the Lord is more with you and in you than with me. But all believers, all believers have the indwelling mm-hmm. presence of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Okay. Well, do we believe? Do we really believe that the body of Christ, that every member of the body of Christ, has value and importance to mm-hmm. God? Mm-hmm. Because if we do then one person's special anointing is not that special. Mm-hmm. You know, it's to serve another part of the body. Mm. The, the noble parts serve the ignoble parts, mm. right? The, um, mm-hmm. the presentable parts mm-hmm. help take care of the unpresentable mm-hmm. parts. And the unpresentable parts are pretty important. Try living without them. We're running out of time. <laughs> We're getting stuck I on wanted to go. I wanted to go more into issues. that, but okay, so... Um, Let's go into the third gift that you yep. mentioned. Uh, uh, you know, long mm-hmm. list of many you focused on four. Yep. Third one was wisdom. wisdom yep. So let's go there. Um, I touched on this briefly. No, it yeah. was brief. I don't have many lines in my notes, but there's a ton that we could yep. talk about with wisdom. Yep. And what you said was, is that, well, we already have uh, wisdom uh, use or access or take advantage of what we've already been given. And you said... There's three things yep. in particular. You said, well, the Bible, it, it's yeah. filled with wisdom. And so for the person that's listening, mm-hmm. if, um, 
if they're going, what, well, what is wisdom? Yeah. Um, how would you, could you define that, give us, you know, like, what is wisdom? I look at it like technology, right? Technology is the application of science. Science is supposed to be what the facts about what's, what's real, mm-hmm. and you're supposed to find a way to apply that into some form or fashion in, in, that right. helps humans. Right. Uh, wisdom. It's a derivative of science. Yeah, so wisdom is the application of God's truth into yep. our lives. Okay, yep. And another uh, saying that that stuck with me that has helped me is seeing and responding to life as God does. And we see that in Scripture. Yep. So we see His wisdom being uh, unveiled to us. Mm-hmm. And your point was, just open it. Kind of start somewhere, Read right? Read the Bible. And, um, it was funny because afterwards I had, I had some people that were <laughs> like, I struggle with just that. Right. I mean, oh. just, just the get, getting to a point where I actually open the Bible and I actually start reading it. I'm surprised at how many people do, even though I would say, well, if not weekly, close to every, mm-hmm. every week, whoever's in the pulpit is saying God's Word yeah. is, I mean, it's resplendent yeah. with everything that you need in life. So why, why do we struggle? Exactly. All right, we struggle to do what's best for ourselves in so many areas of life. I mean... Why, why do we struggle with food and uh, other health issues and sleep? And I mean, like, the list goes on and on. We, we don't, we're not good at doing good for ourselves. Mm. And right. especially when it comes Spiritually. And, and just even in life. No, but we it, can specialize in yeah. so many, uh, do, you know, doing things for our minds, doing things yeah. for our bodies, doing things for whatever. It's amazing how we can put so much time and energy and passion into that. And yep. God is saying, but if you had come to me, yeah, I would have, you know, I would have shown you or given you. So, so the, you're not a, yeah, you're not a body. It, you're not a body first. You're a soul first. Soul first. Yep. All right. And, Correct. and it's like yep. feed the thing that you are, right, and that you will be for eternity. Yes. Then not, take care not, of the yes. other thing that you have in this life. First things first. Yeah. So Bible, Holy Spirit, He, um. He reveals truth, yep. reminds us of truth, yep. and also uh, is the power within, yep. right? Yeah, so and gives you the hunger for that truth. Mm, yeah. It is God who wills that you do His good will, yep. right? For His good pleasure, yep. yeah. Okay, people. The church, specifically. Yeah, yeah, yeah people. Um, well, I would even challenge that. I think that there's some pretty uh, good sources of, of wisdom from mm-hmm. people that aren't even believers. I wouldn't yeah. say that follow them But I, I just kind of put them in that like trinity of, of yeah. gifts, okay. right? Yeah, so, <laughs> right. <laughs> just trying to be <laughs> the clear. The church, right? right? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, right. Okay. And you said, hey, discipleship, getting uh, together with somebody, me- being mentored by somebody, having yeah. somebody more learned than you that you can hitch your wagon to, yeah. that can walk with you through life. That was good. Okay. But even Even just... A Christian friend. It doesn't I mean sometimes you can't find somebody that's like this super spiritual, better than you person. Just having somebody in your life that you can say, when I read this this morning, yes, this is what it meant to me. Let's have a conversation that can help you grow in Christ. Oh because it, I mean, there's there's some Christian friends, yeah. uh, people that I know that uh, you know when they get together, you know I, too many people though. <laughs> Most of these guys, they don't know as many people as you know. <laughs> but, they don't have very many Christians. Well, friends. I would. I, I, yeah. The caveat here is, I would say, hitch a wagon to somebody who is not going to drag you backwards in your walk. Bobby, with who shouldn't who shouldn't people talk to? You have, name names. Well, okay, let's tell, uh, <laughs> <us, laughs> tell us who they are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come talk to me, right? Uh, okay, so before we run out of time here, so yep. the third gift was wisdom, Bible. Um, the person of the Holy Spirit, and then uh, other godly people. Yeah. Uh, then we have the fourth gift that you mentioned, which was hope. Mm. And hope is an elusive thing for a lot of people. Yeah. I wrestled with that fourth thing. I, oh, I, I, must have, I must have written about 25 things okay. for that slot. Okay. And I came back to hope just mainly because of the, the scripture from uh, 2 Corinthians yeah. that, that just it just kept drilling the points that I was hoping to make about our our future is eternal. Our yeah. future is in Christ. Well, within that passage, it's great. Yeah. I mean, so you have the contrast. You have the tent 
this earthly body yeah. wears out, stitches come apart, right? We groan physically. I think yeah. we groan in our spirits because of the injustice and there's this yeah. righteous indignation, what we see going on. He says, ah, but you're going to be clothed later. Yeah. And But now you said something that was interesting because you said there are very few people that you've watched mm. in the final, let's call it hours, days yeah. of yeah. their lives where they're like going, Oh, I can't wait to see Jesus. I can't wait to essentially die and be yeah. with Him. Yeah. Interesting. Um, is you know what it's like, though. When you, when you go to a memorial or when you're a part of somebody's life that embraces the truth of their eternal life, right? it affects the way that they die. Well, you know, okay, so there's... I was thinking of one person. Mm -hmm. And they had been married and were divorced and had they had no kids and they were they knew they were going to die and they were so holding on to this world that they weren't like looking forward to seeing yeah. Jesus. Now I could say with four kids and a wife, let's say that I'm preceding them in yeah. in death, I could see that tension that Paul said, Man, I long to be with Jesus for sure, yeah. but for your sake it's I'm better than I, I, here. I, yes, I, yeah. right. So I see that tension, yeah. um, and I, I I get that. So, but for the person that 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 finality, it, it, should it be the other way around where we go? I can't wait to see him. It's it's this what he was saying there. Like we long, we have this deep longing in us to be our true selves, which mm. is not this life, right. While we're here, we need to be, you know, you don't be disingenuous and constantly, you know, be so heavenly focused that you're no earthly good, you know, right. that old saying. Yep. And, but the idea is that uh, people cling to the stuff of the world mm -hmm. when they don't take an eternal perspective on their right. own lives. Right. That every little thing that happens in this life becomes the most important thing. Right. And all the way down to the point of clinging onto your own physical life. Right. In a way that's really repulsive. Yeah. Especially for somebody who's, of whack. who's got a witness of saying, I, I actually believe that when I die, I'm going to be my true self in the presence of Christ right. for all of eternity. No sin nature. Everything's going to be no brokenness. as promised. Man. Now I'm going to scream and cry and yell and be bitter and angry that, that for some reason my life is coming to an end. Going back to the, the Bible, um, the scriptures, because it's so... It, it, it beautifully displays what we're, we're we have what we have to look forward mm -hmm. to, and if we don't know that, to the extent of that, yep. in proportion to that, either I'm longing for being clothed with who I'm going to be for eternity, yeah. or I'm still holding on to something of this world and and not I'm missing out yeah. on that that future hope. Do you think that a lot of this um, okay hope sustains us? Would you say hope sustains us? I, I think eternal perspective is probably another way to talk about hope. Okay, okay. Uh, having an eternal perspective is what gives you the ability to persevere. Mm. It's what enables you to stand up under trial. Um, it, you know, even though what you're going through is these light and momentary trials. Yeah. I mean, it's, it comes from an, seeing your own life from that mm. eternal perspective mm. as best you can right. in your limited ability, you know, educated by God's Word, Filled mm. with the Spirit, mm. encouraged by His church. Mm. So, if you have that, that real eternal perspective on your life, mm -hmm. you're going to exhibit all the signs mm -hmm. of hope. Mm -hmm. And I think even even for the here and now, not just for eternal life, but that um, if you read the scriptures, that we have a God that is in control. Yeah. He has power over the nations mm. and even rulers. That should give us hope. That it's not a, a world in just absolute chaos. Yeah, and, but it sure uh, that, seems like it is. I know, I know. <laughs> and, you know, and but that's where we're. I don't. And I see think that's it. where faith kicks in, right? Yeah. Because I have to believe him at his word when he says that. Yeah, I, I don't see it all the time. Ah. But I also according don't, to our perspective, right? I also don't know what it would look like if God wasn't actually in control. What would this world look like? Oh. It yeah, would look if like, there were no limits in, in like human Sodom and Gomorrah, I mean, it, it, would, would be, it would look like uh, the land of Canaan before the Israelites uh, occupied it. Yeah. It would look like it, it. It would be hell on earth. Yeah. It is hell on earth. But it would be the absence of. It would just be f so much worse than I can imagine. No, that's a, that's a weird thing to think about. But it's 
Yeah, anyway, yeah. It, that eternal perspective, I think in my, let's just say you're going through something hard, tragic that is about your own life. What are you asking for? What are you seeking? What is it that you're asking of God? What are you knocking on that door for? Yeah. You know, sometimes yeah, pray for pray for healing, pray for change. Yeah. Ask God to intervene. But then have that perspective that says, I don't actually know everything. Mm. And I don't know what God wants to do with mm. this. So I'm going to even submit this hardship and struggle and trial to the Lord and ask mm. Him to use me in it. Mm. Because I see that God's up to more than what I know. Mm-hmm. Right? That, mm-hmm. that gives me a, a different perspective that's built mm. on hope. Mm-hmm. And that's, it's just something that we see is not happening. Mm. Right. We need more of it. Mm. Yeah. And sometimes well, the gift of, of salvation, mm. I mean, even for the here and now, right? I mean, mm. that I mean, daily, thinking back to what, what our lives look like. Mm. You mentioned it in, in your uh, teaching tonight that prior to getting saved, mm. you did what you wanted to do. You were the God on the throne of your life. Yeah. And you knew the condition of that, your soul, everything. And so when He saves us... I mean, that's that's a gift. I, that could be the fifth one. Yeah. You could have that tomorrow if you want. I mean, free of <laughs> charge. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 like, and like this moment, I'll be run out of time. We have run out of time, and time's up on our monitor there. So, folks, uh, we hope that you've got something from this, and uh, sure went by fast. And so, Lord willing, we'll see you next week. And, um, yeah. But, you know, if not heaven fantastic oh <laughs> yeah the hope of heaven okay bless you so you want to pray us out yeah let's do it lord jesus uh we just we take seriously your promise mm. uh, you you have promised us that you would not leave us as orphans mm. and that you your spirit would be within us every single one of us that calls on your name for mm. salvation mm. so lord we take that seriously and we ask god that you would help us to to listen to your spirit as mm. we are engaged in your word, mm. as we lift up the people around us that are part of your church. Yes. God, help us to be, help us to be the ones that are that are setting that eternal perspective, setting the example of hope in mm. lives of others. So thank you, Jesus. Yes, yeah. Amen. All right, folks. Lord willing, we'll see you next week. All right, thank you. Yeah, good stuff. <laughs>